recreational use attainability analysis. Obviously, kind of how those come out will direct really where future watershed planning efforts go. So, um, Joe is here from the TCEQ to give us a little bit of an update on where they are. All right, I'm Joe Martin from the TCEQ Water Quality Standards Group. For some reason, my name got left off the title slide there. <laughs> but, um, so I apologize for that. But I'm going to um, give you an update on how uh, recreational use attainability analyses, or RUAs as we call them, uh, how they're coming. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces, and I suspect y'all are a pretty educated crowd, so I'm not going to get into a lot of the background about how we got here or, you know, what these are. I'll give a brief introduction and you know, get into where we are in the process, um, what we've got going on with those. So use sustainability analysis, uh, it's just a study of factors that affect the attainment of the use of that specific water body. Uh, if you want to change a standard on a, um, on a segment, then you need to do a UAA. There's different types of UAAs. Um, I'm specifically talking about recreational UAAs, but there are aquatic life UAAs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the reason for the study is, is, the, is to ensure that the Appropriate uses and criteria are assigned to the water body. Uh, we just want to make sure that the standards we set are the correct standards and we're not trying to, um, you know, give it a low standard when indeed it needs a much higher one or we're trying to, um, you know, hold it to a standard that it's not capable of attaining. Um, conducting the UA does not necessarily mean that the water quality standards will change. It's a possibility, but, um, you know, you might find out that you've got it right or, you um, that for whatever reason you're not gonna you're deciding not to change it so just because you do a UA does not necessarily mean it's going to occur but it definitely can so these specific um, types of UAs we do are UAs um, we're looking for the type of recreational use that occurs on a water body so you probably wonder well, why you know why are you looking at the recreational use well recreational use determines the bacteria criteria so um, and I'll get into in a second we've now had we have um, several tiers um, of criteria for bacteria now, where in the past you probably know that we only had two. So we expanded those in 2010, and um, so we do these studies to make sure that we've got the appropriate um, criteria set for recreation on that stream. So the study itself is just a warm weather study. We look at the physical measurements of the bank, depth, um, pools, um, stuff that's going on in the riparian zone, everything, um, as well as current historical recreational uses. So um, not only do we collect physical data, take pictures, those kind of things, but a very important component of these is um, talking to stakeholders, talking to people that are um, live in the community or landowners that use the water body. Um, those uh, interviews are extremely helpful in really trying to determine what's going on, not only currently, but historically. We go back to November 28, 1975. That's a uh, Clean Water Act date, it's the date that this, uh, I believe the first standards were promulgated by the uh, EPA. But so we need to go back and make sure, see what's been going on and what's currently going on. Um, the goal is to ensure that the appropriate use is assigned. Okay, so that's why we're doing these studies. Make sure that the use that is um, on the segment or, or the unclassified water body is the correct um, standard. So one thing um, that's an update that's new is, so we use, proceed, you know, we have a standardized procedures that we use and other people who um, do RUAs, state board for example, use as well. Uh, we updated those, so in 2012 we came out with some um, new procedures, not drastically different, but uh, we'd seen what had worked, what hadn't, you know, kind of streamlined some of the stuff, um, some problems we ran into, addressed those in the procedures. So that's something that's, um, that's new, and um, let's see, probably any projects that started late spring, somewhere in there of 2012, are using that. If they were already, had already started before that, they were still using the 2009 procedures, the, um, you know, the procedures we've been using for some time. So, but nothing major, but just some, some little tweaks there to make it run a little smoother. All right, like I said earlier, we, had, we broke it into four categories. I'm sure you're all familiar with this by now. I'll go over it real quickly. Primary contact recreation, significant risk of ingestion, 126 colonies per, uh, colonies, uh, per 100 mil, that's uh, any coli. Um, secondary contact, one, um, no significant risk, 630 CFU. Um, secondary two, same activities, but occur less frequently because physical characteristics, 
deeply in size banks, hard to get down to the water, streams just, you know, a tenth of a meter, um, no public access, those kind of things. Criterion for that is 1,030. And then non-contact recreation, um, this is one we had before when there were only two categories. Uh, this, really the only place we have non-contact recreation, places like the ship channels, where it's illegal or because of Homeland Security you can't get in there. There's, um, those, so those, that's reserved for a select few, um, and that is 2060, 2060 colony forming units per 100 mil. I just realized that this is very um, freshwater centric here. I don't have any um, Ontario numbers, but anyway. So stats of RUA is where we stand right now. So well, this has been going on for several years now, as you may know. Um, we have 73 RUAs on water bodies under review back, uh, back in Austin right now. So that, when I say 73, I'm talking about water bodies, not um, projects themselves, because one project may contain several water bodies. We have released some draft recommendations. Um, we have 20 RUAs that have draft recommendations that have been released for public comment. That all happened starting, I guess, um, in late spring of last year on through late summer, somewhere in that um, area. Um, of those 28 got recommended for reclassification, secondary contact, uh, recreation one, and three of those got reclassified or recommended reclassification, secondary contact two. Um, now we currently have 32 in progress, 32 water bodies. What that means is this could be in various levels of progress. It could be, some of them haven't started yet, but are in the planning uh, stages and are going to start uh, this summer. Some, the field work is finished up, the, um, the reports are being written, those kind of things. So there's a pretty big gradation in, um, in where these projects are. But, so we have 32 water bodies that are currently in progress. You can see that studies are being conducted all over the state from Canadian down to the Nueces by ourselves and uh, the state board is handling a number of those as well. Um, if you want to find out what's going on, um, you, we have a website and I will say that Sometimes to find the RUA website is not necessarily the easiest thing. <laughs> now, I will say, if you can go to standards, surface water quality standards, or the, um, if you can find standards, then RUA is easy to find. But if you don't know to go look under standards, then, I mean, you're stuck with our search engine. It's, it works. It'll get you there. But nonetheless, there's the web address. Um, if you, like I said, if you know to go to surface water quality standards, you can find it. That'll give you the updates. Uh, all the reports that have been released in public comment are on there. Um, the recommendations that have been released for public comment are on there. It has every, all the information um, that you need. Also, if you go back to the Surface Water Quality Standards page, you can sign up for our advisory work group, get on that listserv, and that's um, how we send out emails saying that we've got um, stuff open for public comment. We put a report out there, we've got a recommendation out there. So if you sign up on that listserv, you'll, you'll receive all those emails. All right, public participation. I don't know what y'all are talking about, all this opposition to government coming in. I'm always welcome with open arms wherever I go. But you can come to Nacogdoches anytime. I'll be up there soon. I've missed out on y'all's meetings, but um, I'll think. 